Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick, uh, episode one, season one, Taboo, kicking off on FX, Ben Mankiewicz, Alonzo Duralde. Uh This is a Tom Hardy joint, like he kind of, he created this show, basically. I think. Oh, did he? Uh, I did, yeah. And, he, it, with his, and his father, too, is that uh, there's, oh. his father gets a credit, like uh, Chippy, or okay. Chappy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd, lo um, I'd look up, I assumed it was his uh, Chips Hardy. Chips, that's a great name, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's apparently his dad. Uh, and it, this episode was written by, I don't know if the whole series is, written by Stephen Knight, who wrote Locke, which we loved. I which, think uh, and he must have significant role, we loved Locke, uh, yeah. because it's uh, the the trailers on FX have both their names on it. Tom oh, okay. Hardy, Stephen Knight, so All obviously right. it's not, he's not just writing, it's gotcha, not one gotcha. And I think, and like Scott Free is behind this, so this is a big deal, like this This is a major production with big players and people who don't, you normally do TV. Yeah, he's, he's got a, he's, he's got eight episodes listed. For, right, for Stephen although Knight. Stephen Knight, fun fact, also uh, created Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Is that right? Yeah. Well, smart guy yeah. then. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I recall, and I mentioned this before, but it bears repeating as we begin a, a, a Tom Hardy television series. I was listening to Bradley Cooper on uh, Howard Stern, and it was, I think, during, as he was out promoting American Sniper, and mm -hmm. Cooper's been on Stern a couple of times, and, and Stern, Howard asked him if he'd uh, ever been on, if he'd considered television. And, uh, you know, TV, and Cooper was like, yeah, definitely, no, I'm sure if the, if the script is right and the part's right, I don't care whether it's TV or movies, I'd do it. And Howard was like, yeah, I got it, TV's never been better, but still, you're a, you've been nominated, you know, like, whatever, three straight years mm -hmm. for an Oscar. Isn't television still still something? Still something. If you're a big movie star, step down. And Bradley Cooper said, "It just surprised me so much." He goes, "No, not at all, man. Tom Hardy does television. Yeah, like that was he was his, on Peaky Blinders. That's true. Right. Yeah. And it, but but that he but chose that Tom example, Hardy. That yeah. Bradley Cooper thought mm -hmm. that that's how revered Tom Hardy is in that world. And yeah. if Tom Hardy does TV, that, that's and, and funny, then anybody yeah. anybody can do TV. And now this is his second. Endeavor since becoming a huge star, he may right. have done British TV before. I don't know. Yeah, and I'm not yeah. fully clear on that. But yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, so he's been on. It popped up on Peaky Blinders, but now this is like his baby. And um, it, it, what I kept thinking about while I was watching the show was how hard it was for Stanley Kubrick to shoot Barry Lyndon by candlelight. No, because no. now you can just shoot every damn thing by candlelight. This entire show is like never above about 20 lumens. That's like right, it's just, yeah. it's so dark it all is, the time. It's very dark and I find that, uh, uh, there have been many times when I find that very frustrating. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't, you know, little things, I don't want to squint. Right. Uh, I didn't feel that here. So, no, no, yeah, no, not yeah. at all. Nice. I think it, it, it works, it, it's, it's germane to the story that's being told. So this is what, the early 19th century? This is during the War of 1812. That's what I think. So it's yeah. 1814, I think. Yeah. And uh, and so so Tom Hardy uh, plays uh, James Delaney, thought dead, um, mm. had gone off to sea, was apparently involved in the slave trade, and this uh, is a, a significant family that uh, owned what? What did they have? What was their business? The Delaney. Oh. Right? Uh, but they owned business. They yeah. were fairly well off, and uh, the son uh, went off to Africa. Right. Has been gone. 10 years and everybody just figured dead because if you don't see somebody for 10 years in 1800, they're well, dead. Well, and he was on a boat that, that mm -hmm. sank. And, right, and he'd been on, oh, that's right. And he'd been a, but he'd been a, a well-decorated and skilled uh, soldier. Right. But one who didn't like authority and, yes. and fought with his superiors. So, uh, and, and Jonathan Price, who's the head of the East India Company. Was his commanding officer. Was his commanding officer, um, but didn't recall him, but no. he, he clearly recalled Price. Yes. <laughs> so uh, so the, the patriarch uh, dies under what we later learn are mysterious circumstances. May have been poisoned. Uh, yeah, so according to a really gruesome 19th century autopsy. Uh, probably the, fairly primitive. I don't know. That yeah. That but, but we assume that that's probably right. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that was as, that was as good of evidence as any that he was, he'd been given arsenic and so he sort of lost Over his mind. Over time, yeah. Over time. Uh, and it turns out the reason that they wanted to kill him was because he has this plot of land that uh, is going to become <laughs> very um, uh, pivotal in the post War of 1812 period. Uh, it's it's a, a sound uh, on the co on the west coast of the United States or in Canada uh, around Vancouver Island. That's the gateway to China, and so the East India Company wants it, but uh, Hardy has just inherited it and doesn't want to give it up. Yeah, and they wanted to. Uh, they'd cut a deal with Hardy's. Sister, sister, half sister, half sister, um, with whom he'd had some kind of relationship. Obviously, I, I assume that's the titular taboo, but maybe there'll yes. be other ones. 
No, it's clear from her letter, like, yeah. I hope you'll be silent about this, and he mentioned that he still loves her. No, 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 I'm just saying, I'm wondering if the yeah. show's going to oh. have other taboos in it oh, besides yeah. incest. Right, uh, well, I mean, you know, clearly. We're just getting started, you know, I mean, it's only episode one. Uh, and Hardy keeps referencing the terrible, terrible things that he's done. Right. Um, and, uh, and so it was interesting. So, again, as always, he's an interesting character. Uh, you know, you imagine when he discovers that his father's uh, doc, office at the docks is being used as a whorehouse. Right. That there's going to be some sort of bond where he's like, well, you can use half the house and it'll help me make a little money and right, I don't right. care. But no, he threatens to kill her and yeah. just two hours to get out. Yes. Franca Potente, by the way. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, 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 so I imagine she'll be back. Uh, well, yeah. One I mean, would imagine you don't just give her that one Exactly, yeah. I think scene. She, she's going to be recurring one way or another. So we may, the whorehouse may come back. Yes, <laughs> and, and she's the prostitute who took his virginity all these years That's ago, right, apparently. that's right. We also learned that. So Which makes her older than him, but she doesn't really look it, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You imagine <laughs> that a prostitute in 1814 probably doesn't age well. Yeah, no, but, not um, a lot of skin care going um, on. But uh, so a lot of interesting things going on, and the East India Company is making the argument that because... And it's funny because you, the funny things about the War of 1812 is that the, the Jonathan Price is the head of the East India Company, and, and that those scenes are great of those the meeting of these yes. people who are really, you know, they really are controlling the empire almost yeah. more so than the, the, than the, the king. The, 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 the subtext here is very much the like you know as goes the corporation, so goes the the, the nation, which is you know a little relevant now. So. Right, and well, that's why this show <laughs> seems like there may be some great relevancy there. But they make an argument that this is. Um, a necessary plot of land, you know, because we're at war with the United States. And they says, Tom Hardy, did you know that? And it occurs to you that I guess people would not know. The war's not being fought there. True. Right? Uh, you know, there Turns are papers. Which long sheet you're right, reading. Right, you right, know. right. And, and, but, of course, Tom Hardy knows everything. 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 Yeah. He's an incredibly smart guy. And we know that, that the, the East India Company doesn't want this land because it's a pivotal launching point for attacks on the U.S. Uh, by... Uh, uh, Great Britain, uh, they want it because there's money. Yeah, it's money. for the it's, China trade. Right. Clearly, it's valuable to them. Uh, 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 it's valuable to them financially. And there's that ominous moment from Jonathan Price at the end where he's like, I thought we could reason with him. We can't. And he turns to someone we don't even know. Maybe mm. that guy sitting back a row. <laughs> he's yours now. Right. Which, you know, that's the heavy, I presume, that guy. Yes. That guy is going to die. Whoever that guy is who he's talking to <laughs> is going to die an ugly death at the hands of Tom Hardy. I, I was going to say, because it's been very clear this this is a character not to be fucked with. The way that he talks to Franco Patente, the way he talks to the, the, the guy who does the autopsy, the way he talks to everybody, just like, you back the fuck up. It's he's Tom got one Hardy. friend. That's an interesting character. Yes, the butler, the family retainer. Uh, um, and uh, that guy is theoretically loyal. And we're, we don't know about the loyalties of his sister. Like, we presume the sister ultimately does not want him hurt. Right, we but, but, we don't know. but also she is, you know, it, it, well, you're a woman in the early 19th century, like, a lot of times your husband is sort of running the show, and the husband seems to be a real piece of work. So yeah, he's a buffoon, though. She's yes. smarter than he is. Oh, that's, clearly, yes, that, no that's question. That's clear, and that is uh, the, the, the second Una Chaplin. Yes, uh, Una Chaplin, daughter of Geraldine, uh, granddaughter of Charlie, and great-granddaughter of Eugene O'Neill, so... That's, yeah. a, that's a lineage. That is, that is a serious lineage. So, uh, you know, as we talk about it, it makes me like it more. You know, yeah. I, I didn't dislike it okay. at all. But uh, um, uh, but I thought it, you know, t I'm, I'm worried about, first of all, there was a fair amount, you, you, they, not a lot of explanation in the beginning of what was happening. Mm -hmm. So I was a little frustrated by what's he what is he digging up? Money? When, uh, he, he, bur or he, he buried something right in the beginning. Uh, he came uh, off the boat, rode off the boat to a tree, found a tree where he had clearly left something. Oh, God, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, Actually, maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's coming was, up later. Maybe it was just money, maybe I'll rewatch. that. The first thing I remember is him taking the pennies off of the, the dead father's eyes. So and I, then I he forgot, got, forgot then he, about the tree thing. Then he got a horse somehow, but whatever, I'll leave that and took, oh, the, right. horse into London, I took the horse into London. Uh, so, uh, oh, right, yes, yeah, the whole, okay, it's coming back. And then there are a yeah, couple of moments where he looks out at the water and there's a flash. There's like a supernatural quality here. Right, and there's also the flashback with the clearly the some of the dead slaves from that ship who like were he drowned. Didn't, like, like the slaves drowned as the ship went down, and they were trapped in the yeah. hull, and obviously. He, and he claims not to be haunted by this, but obviously he is. So it's you know we'll be finding out more about that. Uh, there is, you know, I, I can imagine there's going to be a somewhat touchy conversation at some point about the fact that. Uh, we don't know, I mean, since he's half-sister, half-brother with, with the Una Chaplin character, we don't know who her mother is, but his mother was clearly, uh, 
uh, either Native American or black, I'm not clear which, I guess a Native American, Native American, American yeah. because that's where the, 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 the parts of the land comes from, which makes Tom Hardy, uh, technically his character is mixed race. That's right. Um, and and that know. will, I'm sure, be relevant in some ways, too. And we had the scene where he was waiting for the autopsy to be completed, where he was haunted directly by one of the slaves, right. presumably, who died. And then I'm just saying that there may be some discussion about the cast. Like Tom Hardy so, deciding to cast himself as a mixed race character. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, come on, come on. These are actors. I don't get it. Well, yeah. It, yeah, it's a conversation. It's worth having. I don't know. If there's always necessarily one answer, but you know. yeah. Um, but anyway, so I'm more into it now. His hat bothers me. <laughs> the hat is very, it's very tall. It's very like it's a Johnny Depp wears that hat. It's a yeah. It's a yeah. little. There's there are some moments where it's kind of like I'm I'm posing with the hat. You right, know, yeah. and, and like. But he is as good an actor as there is, man. Oh he is God, just, yeah. He is, no, uh, I'm he a is big compelling fan. to watch uh, in every line he delivers. He's got the cool scar. Yeah, the, he he does a lot with not having to say anything, uh, but but then when he speaks, it you know. All the more so. So I, I'm, I'm interested, and yeah. I'm glad we talked about it. It made me take it from like a B to a B plus or a okay, minus. Yeah, so. yeah. And and I mean, again, it's like it, 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 you always have to give a show a few episodes to really find its footing if you're what it's doing. But for the first hour plus, because this was what 81 minutes, yeah. I think, on FX. You know, uh, they they seem to know what they're doing. So and and, and two guys in the East India Company, uh, 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 now dead uh, Game of Thrones veterans. Oh, interesting. Killed at the end of. Of season seven, uh, when the whatever it was, the Red Keep or whatever the hell it is, blew up. They were they, to those two guys, Jonathan Price and the uh. and the clownish guy who kept not letting him finish the sentence. And oh, the the, the the vicar guy. Or yeah, whatever, that yeah. guy. Those guys. Those guys bought it. Again, the there are there are ten actors on television, yeah, and we just have to keep hiring the same ones. Heaven forbid. Nature abhors a vacuum. All right, so we'll be back with more taboo this season. Come back. Thanks for joining us.